Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm here to help you and explain to you how the control modules work on these BMWs. Now this does apply to the BMW E60 chassis, all of them. So that'll be E61, E63, E64, the E90 chassis, all the way up, because all the control modules are all the same. This will also apply for the 7 Series, the x 5 the lot. I'm gonna explain to you what actually happens from the start, from when your key actually goes near the car, to how it all runs when you put your key inside the ignition, to then what's waking up, what's powering on. So hopefully this video will help a lot of you be able to diagnose your electrical problems on these cars. As many of you guys know, these cars are very, very well advanced and people still don't understand them still to this day. Bearing in mind the 60, the electronics actually come out in 2003, then BMW changed it over in 2006, and, and then they changed it over again in 2008, and that's purely because obviously these cars had a lot of problems with the electronics, and they wanted to try and rectify a lot of the issues as they were going forward. But a lot of it didn't work out, especially for the first models, which is 2003 up to 2005 with the diamond key. Then ones had a lot of issues electronically, and I'm gonna here to help you, hopefully solve them problems um, by telling you how these cars actually operate from the moment your key goes near the car to starting the car and what's actually waking up, what's not waking up, and how to diagnose any issues. So let's get onto this video. God damn, get it on with you. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, guys, so as you can see, we're working today with this Black E60, and I know many of you guys, you know can appeal to this one a lot more than you can in the other ones because many of you have this same car with the same spec and there's nothing different compared to mine, to many of yours, and it just makes more sense to do it on this one because you guys um, can get a complete understanding of how it works because it doesn't have anything extra high tech like the M5 does. So as you can see here, the door locks are actually down. We've got the key in our hand. Now, many people don't understand, but when the car is off, Terminal 30 shuts down everything on these cars. And I will go over what Terminal 30 is, Terminal 30G, Terminal 30F in a second. So when everything's off, you basically got Terminal Zero. That's everything completely out. There's no power going to the car whatsoever. Everything is off. Terminal 30 shuts everything down and the car goes to Terminal Zero. So basically there's no current going through. Now, when you press the unlock button on the car, everything will wake up. Now, when I say everything will wake up, we'll go inside the car. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the key in the ignition. Now when you first put the key in the ignition, this is gonna put it into the overrun position for terminal 15. Now when you pull it in, you will see your lights, like normal, will come on on your combi and you'll get your iDrive turned on and everything else on the first position. Now we're gonna press the ignition on and what that will do, terminal 15 will now signal terminal 30 to turn on as soon as you press the ignition. And what that will do, that will broadcast the message over via terminal 15 to terminal 30 to wake up the K-CAN lines. And then what that will do is now wake up the driver's side footwell module, so your FRM, your crash safety module, your airbag module, your combi, your DME, your gateway modules, your transmission control module, your SZL, so steering column switch cluster, which D60 has, and also your integrated chassis management module. So now everything's ready to go. And then when you press the start stop button, when you hear the engine turning over, that will trigger terminal 50 from the rear, which I'll show you in a sec, to trigger the starter motor, which is run on terminal 50, not on terminal 30. So that is how the electronics work via the ignition system itself. Okay guys, so if you can see here, this is the terminal for EG relay. Now this section right here, this fuse box is actually located on the E60 in the trunk section. On the E90s, this will be located um, with your JBBE in the front behind your glove box. Now this plays a very, very important role for the car, this relay and obviously all these lines right here and I'm about to explain to you what they do. Now this line right here, as you can see, is connected onto this junction box, which is also connected to this relay, which is also connected to the battery. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is this cable right here is connected directly to the continuous positive terminal, which is the power for your CAS module, your DME and everything else. Now, this is the part that I think will help a lot of you understand you're on no crank, no start. Now, when your battery goes dead, 
This has got a direct feed going to all their modules to make sure that even if your battery goes dead or there's any problems, that you will still be able to start your car regardless. And this is why it's so important the way BMW have to set out. This Terminal 30G relay right here continuously has power and this power is actually only going to the control units that you need to get the car running. This is not feeding the whole power to the whole car. So do remember that. And this is why that 30G relay is very important. It's also important because Terminal 30 is actually used for control units and electrical loads, especially when a driver is present. So for instance, if you're present, that will be responsible for controlling your DME, your gearbox, your EGS, your iDrive controller, your CD changer, everything inside the car while you're present. So Terminal 30 is very, very important for all the electronics on the car. Now it brings me on to Terminal 50. Now Terminal 50 will be this battery cable going off here because this one is separate and goes to the battery and this cable right here, which runs under the floor and back to the starter motor. Now this is what they class as Terminal 50. When you go under the car, you've obviously, many of you know from the recall, you have a battery cable under the floor, under your carpet, and obviously going directly under the floor as well, which then runs back to the front of the alternator and to the starter motor. That is Terminal 50. Terminal 50 is used to provide power to the starter motor. So if you do have a Terminal 50 error, it will be a starter motor problem, which is not engaging properly, or maybe a bad cable or something like that that's going on with the car. So that's, if you do get a Terminal 50 fault on ISTA or anything like that, that will be something to do with um, anything regarding the starter motor, which is very, very easy to be able to diagnose because Terminal 50 doesn't have much on it. Terminal 30, however, is gonna be one of the hardest ones because the relay right here, this will not be responsible for causing your issues. So many people seem to think that you take that and change it, it's not gonna solve your issues. This is just basically like a messenger and helping control all the power going to all the modules during when the car is running, when, the, uh, when you're inside the car, when you're stopped, so on and so on and so on. Now the Terminal 30G relay as well, is something that many people don't realize, is actually used to prevent increased closed circuit consumption. So for instance, when you've got a battery drain, this Terminal 30 relay right here will switch off extra electrical loads, especially if you've got retrofits or anything like that, that obviously hasn't been coded and programmed to the car where the control modules know what time to turn it off, how long it should be staying alive and so on and so on. So what it will do is the procedure for Terminal 30 is to switch off and disconnect electric loads in a way that it, um, shuts them off from the electrical system. And this will happen literally 60 minutes after Terminal R is off. Then the deactivated electric loads are activated again together with Terminal 30G on. Now the Terminal 30G relay that many of you guys message me for all the time is actually controlled via the CAS module. Now, the reason for that is the relay is actuated by the car access system and then power to the following control units is managed by the Terminal 30G relay. Now, that will control your center console, so your SZM, your rain and low beam sensor, your iDrive controller, your central information display, you know, your satellite radio, your high flamp fire, your telephone to your Bluetooth module, heads up display, everything you want 30G actually controls inside the car. To wake up Terminal 30 is very, very simple. There's only two things you need to do. If you've got unlocked the vehicle, there'll be a telephone wake up line for telematic services or service applications. So if you've got the Bluetooth and your phone goes off, that will wake up the 30G relay as well. It's providing if you've got the phone inside the cradle. Now the switch off conditions are very, very easy as well. Is 60 minutes after terminal R is off. So that's the key out the ignition, everything shut down and the power management switch off. So that will only switch off via the power management systems, which is if when the car detects that there's no battery drain and it will shut off all the systems on its own. Now the Terminal 30G F relay is controlled by the junction box control unit, which will, on these cars will be the KGM, um, on E90s will be the JBE. Now that actually switches off the connected electric loads. So the connected electric loads are the CCC. If a fault occurs um, and if it's the, the 30G relay is, by, is not stable enough, it will just switch itself off when no power is applied. Now, if you can see, we're actually in the glove compartment. Now, if you'll see here, we've got a load of fuses. Now, you will have a Terminal 15 fuse here, and I believe it's this one right here, the 50 amp one. That's your Terminal 15 one. That's the one that actually controls the DME, the car access system and everything else. Now, that will not blow. So you do not have to worry about blowing that fuse that is not gonna be your issue if you've got any faults regarding Terminal 15 or Terminal 30. It's very, very rare the relay goes 
or the fuse goes. So just bear that in mind and do not stop ripping fuses out. If you've got a problem with Terminal 15, it's gonna be something as I explained already in the video. But that fuse is not gonna be responsible for why your current starting to change and it's not gonna make your car start. Um, if there's a problem with Terminal 15, Terminal 30, it's gonna be something that you need to sort out and be able to diagnose correctly. You're not just gonna be able to switch out a fuse and it's gonna work. It's not gonna happen, so do bear that in mind. Now, this is the important one that I know a lot of you end up getting on your BMW 60 and E90s and don't know how to diagnose it. So when you first put your key in the ignition, most of you will end up seeing a car on the ramp light in yellow, which means high battery drainage. Now, what ends up happening with Terminal 15 on Wake Up is before the DME assumes sleep mode, it actually informs the IBS sensor, which is what I've told you many times about the current state of charge of the battery before it goes actually to sleep. Now the IBS will send the wake up signal when the available state of charge is used up. The DME will actually retain that information on the current state of charge of the battery from the IBS sensor itself. The IBS then informs the DME when the battery state of charge is basically critical. So then what ends up happening is the DME requests that all the modules actually shut down to stop taking any more power. The DME no longer permits the IBS to wake the vehicle up because the, the IBS is the one that is responsible for waking the vehicle up to record it into the DME. And then what will end up happening is the vehicle will then go back into sleep mode and then the wake up function only applies when the vehicle is at rest. So what ends up happening is when you put the key in the ignition, that's why many of you get a high battery drain light on your combi because the IBS has been sending the information to the DME and this is why it's very, very important. Many of you will say to me, you don't register your battery. This is why it's so important to register it because you will not know when you get a battery drain and when you end up with no crank, no start, that could have been saved because the IBS is responsible to tell the DME the state of charge of the battery and then for the DME to correspond with the whole car's electronics with the Terminal 30G to shut the whole car down all electronically completely when it's asleep so it doesn't take any more power and saves your power for when you need to start the car. That's why it's very, very important, guys, that you make sure you register your battery to the cars because I've been telling you and telling you this for a very, very long time and it's so critical you do that because you will not know when you've got a battery drain and when the battery completely runs out completely, what will end up happening, you won't be able to start your car and then it's based back onto a new battery. So do make sure to register it and do it all properly with your car or that was what will end up happening to you. And I get this comment a lot about people's cars. They got this, they got that, their car ain't starting. That's purely the reason why, because you cannot just chuck a battery in this car and think you can drive it. It's just not the case. There is enough cheap scan tools out there that allow you to register the um, battery on these cars. And I will link one down below for you guys to go and check out if you do need one to do that, because it's so important that you register it, because as I've told you, without registering it, you're gonna end up in a world of problems and the DME and the Terminal 30 relay is gonna be responsible for constantly shutting down the car. So it's very important, guys, that you make sure you register your battery because if not, what's gonna keep happening is the car will keep waking up, DME will keep requesting Terminal 30G to shut down all the electronics, and then that's why many of you guys message me saying your relay in the boot area is very, very hot. Yes, it will be hot because it's constantly running while the driver is present, which is you, you yourself, while you're driving the car, while you're running everywhere, while you're driving the car, that relay is constantly running at all times. So do remember that it's not hot because there's a problem. It's hot because it's using so much power and current going through that relay to control the electronics on this car. Okay guys, so I can understand there's probably a lot to take in. A lot of you are probably gonna ask me what the hell did any of that mean and how is that gonna help you diagnose your car? But if you, Rewatch the video and try and rewatch it. I think a lot of you will then probably, you know, be able to work out what's actually wrong with your car and be able to understand it a lot more than what that code actually means. Because I know there's a lot of you that get that code, especially when you scan with Vista or another scan tool, and it will tell you Terminal 15, Terminal 30, and many of you don't know where to look for that. Many of you don't know what's on them lines. Many of you don't know what's causing that issue, and then you end up with a world of problems. Now, these BMW 60s and E90s are all exactly the same. They all work the same way. The FRM and JBB is just the only difference compared to the LM module on this and the KGM module. So do remember that. And like I said, if you do need further help, don't hesitate to comment in the box below because I know one of my guys on this channel will end up helping you or I will comment and try and help you the best I can. But I hope this actually clears up a lot of the issues on this car. And like I said, there isn't many people that's actually fully been able to tell you um, how these modules actually work and how the lines work on this car for wake up terminals and you know terminal 15, terminal 30 G, F, what one's on what, and then you'll be able to understand where to look precisely and what modules actually cause an issue instead of ripping out everything, trying to find a problem. 
So thank you very much for watching guys. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.